Okay, so I got this comment on my Create This Book 2 video from Beautiful Craft asking if I could do a tutorial on how I draw my little avatar character that shows up sometimes in my videos and on my thumbnails. So yeah, this is that video. I work on my iPad Pro with an Apple Pencil and this is the program I use for anything I put in a video that's drawn. It's called Adobe Draw and it's basically the very light pared down version of Adobe Illustrator which is the vector art program from Adobe. I use this whenever I want to draw very simple shapes or make stencils for spray paint art with my Cricut or digitizing for embroidery, that kind of thing. Anyway, so opening this up, I have a folder here for all things related to YouTube. And most of my avatars are in these two project files. I just stacked them all together. You can see the different layers are the different avatars I have made on this right hand side scroll. I usually condense them into one layer when I'm completely done with them, since Adobe Draw only gives you a certain number of layers to work on, so the less layers hanging around, the better. But just for some examples, this is one of the ones that shows up pretty often. I left the arms off of this image so that if I want to draw a different hand gesture, I don't have to redraw the entire image, I can just add a layer underneath and draw some arms, however I need them to be. You might recognize this one, she's my end card image along with the background. This is the one I use for my review thumbnails, especially the alcohol marker reviews. This is the one I use for challenge thumbnails and also for my recent Copic giveaway. This one goes on my haul and unboxing thumbnails, digital speed paints, monthly boxes, traditional speed paints. I also printed this one out and put her on the cover of my Create This Book 2. And I did make a mermaid version with a tail to use on my mermaid thumbnails as well for those speed paint videos. And this one is the one that goes on my doll repaints. And that's all the ones in this file, though there are more in the other file. I actually have a lot of these made. And I decided today that I need a couple more expressions, so I figured it would be a prime time to show you how I make them. This is the color palette I use for all of them. I try to keep them as consistent as possible. So there is a light, a base, and a dark version of each color. Now I try to make them all roughly the same size and proportion to each other. It makes it easier to edit them together. So usually what I do is drop the opacity of an earlier avatar and put the construction lines on top of it in order to keep the same head size in proportion to the shoulders or the arms or what have you. However, later I will show one from start to finish from scratch. This is just the process I now use if I'm making one to make sure that they stay relative to each other. I use one brush pretty much the entire time and I just adjust the size depending on what I'm doing. Usually for line art I will use anything from 1.0 to 2.5 and then when I'm coloring I use larger and smaller brush sizes to fill in larger or smaller areas depending on what I need. Once I have the basics, the size of the head and the bun, the shoulders, arms if applicable, I get rid of the older avatar image by making the layer invisible. You select the layer and tap the eye to make it disappear or reappear. Then I switch to black and add a new draw layer. And for the head and bun and other basic shapes, since I can't draw a smooth line to save my life when drawing digitally, I use the shapes tool in the upper right hand corner. There are all kinds of useful shapes here and you can either trace outlines or stamp them like stamps. They're really very useful. Anyway, I use the circle tool for the top of the head. You can adjust the size and you can skew it with the arrow if you want an oval instead of a perfect circle. Set it where you want it and then draw on the edge that you want to use. Very simple. So after the basic smooth shapes are done, it's on to the rest of the line art. This one is that sort of devious, evil, shiny eyed anime face. Hence the uh, sharp teeth and starburst for eyes. Once that's done, I delete the construction lines layer. Again, for me, it's all about conserving the number of layers that I'm using. And I make a new layer for color underneath the line art layer. This face is a little unique in that it needs a dark blue gradient from the top of the face down to the normal skin tone at the bottom. So for that, I filled in the face half with that dark blue and half with the medium skin tone before I reduced the opacity of my brush down to 50% and made a few lines in a row. 
overlapping them very slightly to make a sort of blocky, cartoony looking gradient from the skin tone to the blue. Oh, and I moved one of her eyes because they looked too close together to me. Uh, before I continued with the gradient up to an even darker blue at the hairline. Once that sort of unique part of the face was done, I followed my normal process. Fill in the base color for whatever I'm coloring on this layer, in this case the skin, and then add highlights on one side and shadows on the other. I also try to put as many things on one layer as I can, again to try and conserve the number of layers I'm using. So you'll see here I'm putting the skin and hair tie on one layer. I probably also could have done the pants too on this layer, I'm not totally sure why I didn't. Uh, anyway, I add a new layer on top of the skin and color the teeth as well as the orange shirt. Again, filling in the base colors before adding shadows and highlights. And finally, I add a third layer where I color the hair and the logo on my t-shirt and the pants in, again, shading and adding highlights as needed. And she's done! Isn't she beautiful? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you've noticed I paint very messily. Is that a word? Uh, I don't stay in the lines when I paint, let's say it that way. But that's because now that I've colored everything that I'm adding to a given layer, I will go back and erase everything that's outside of the line art. That's how I always do digital art, no matter what program I'm using. Uh, if you watched my old Voltron speed paint, which also used Adobe Draw, you will know that this is quite true. That one was super messy and I just went back and erased and cleaned it up when it was done. However, for this topmost color layer, it's actually really hard to see where the line art is because the colors on it are so dark. So in this case, I usually turn down the opacity of the color layer about 50%, and it makes the line art more visible. Sometimes I'll also turn off the lower color layers if they're too dark as well, like with the dark blue in the face on this one. It's so dark it makes the line art for the hairline hard to see as well. And then I just go around all the perimeters with the eraser tool and erase up to the edges of the line art. Once everything is cleaned up nice nice, I merge all the layers to make the avatar one layer and clean up any last minute details as I go. Now since these are usually on top of either busy or black backgrounds, I do do one last thing. I add a black background at 50% opacity to the image so that I can see what I'm doing. And then I add a layer on top of it underneath the finished avatar, grab a white brush, and add a little white outline to the entire image to make it easier to see against dark or busy backgrounds. That done, all that's left is to save the image. If you're starting from scratch, make sure you make the default white background layer invisible before you save. Otherwise, you won't have a transparent image, there will be a white background. I actually deleted my background layer in this file to give myself another layer's worth of space. Uh, again, it's all about conserving layers in this program. If you're just doing the one, you can make it invisible and it shouldn't bother you. But what if you're just starting from scratch? Well, it works the same way. Just create a new file. It really doesn't matter what size canvas you make, just make it large enough that you'll have space to work. Being a vector program, the images that you create tend to resize very nicely, so the size of your work doesn't matter so much in the grand scheme of things, though I do always recommend making things larger than necessary because images seem to size down much more nicely than if you need to size them up, just as a sort of general rule of thumb. Anyway, so make a new canvas, hide or delete the default background layer, and start sketching. I always work in a light color for the construction lines. This time I will do my avatar with her arms crossed and sighing. After the construction lines are pretty good, I add some line art on top of those. And here you'll see I do bring in an old avatar for a second, just to check for size and proportion to make sure that it looks comparable. You won't need to do this if you're just drawing your first one, but I do try and keep them as consistent as possible. Satisfied with that, I delete the construction lines and add a few more details like my glasses and t-shirt logo before I move on to color. This time, as I finish each layer, I'm cleaning them up and merging the line art into them. I do it both ways, it doesn't really make a difference, the end result will be the same if you erase at the very end and then merge everything. 
The glass in the glasses is similar to how I did the gradient in the last avatar I showed you. The glass layer is on top of the line art and I colored the space in with white at 50% opacity and then I erased around the frames of the glasses. I also decided to change the mouth shape at the very last minute as well and at the end I added that white background outline just like with the other one and now I have two new avatars to use. I feel like the one is making some ridiculous half-baked scheme and the other is like sigh this isn't going to work just glasses anyway i hope this little tutorial was helpful it's a pretty easy process all things considered maybe a little time consuming but that's sort of par for the course let me know if there's anything else you'd like to know how i make or what my process is and i'll see what i can do subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any uploads and if you're watching this before july 15th 2020 Please don't forget to head over to my huge Copic giveaway that I mentioned earlier. You will be able to win one of 12 prize packages, each including a set of Copic sketch markers, a crescent render, no bleed drawing pad, and lots of other goodies. Once this video goes up, I think there will only be two days left, so get your entries in if you want to win. And until next time, I'll see y'all later. Bye!